everybody. Welcome back to Skill Check. Uh, Ryan and I have had the great fortune of becoming professional Magic the Gathering players and... Uh, in the loosest. Yeah, in a very so loose, loose sense. <laughs> we have gone through a lot of different tools for card games and we've created sort of a... Cheat sheet? Cheat sheet of great products that we want to recommend to people who may be new or maybe who are old to the game and want to get back into it using the best tools possible. Yeah. Um, we're going to start with physical products just because the list is much shorter than digital um, and because people often go to a store and want to play but don't know what to purchase. So how about you start us off with some of the physical products that we cool. can get. I'm going to use those in front of me. Yeah, do it. This is my favorite deck box. It is an Ultra Pro Satin Tower. Um, there are surely other kinds like it, but the reason I like this is because you can stack these very high in your backpack. They sound like this and they protect the hell out of your cards. Um, I have thrown these before. Yeah, we live in Florida. There's yeah. plenty of water everywhere, and these things are really, really secure. Yeah. Other than being a little tough to open, sometimes they fit the whole deck. Um, sure, there's plenty other ways to keep a deck, but honestly, like if you sling your backpack around like I do, yeah. you want something that's as hard as your head. Yeah, and these things also hold dice in the very bottom of them sometimes, or anything else, if you want to roll a spliff and put it into the bottom. Go you can it. get them on Amazon for like 11 bucks? Yep, something like that, and they're in every game store and every comic store that you could imagine. Uh, some other physical products that are good is you definitely want to put sleeves on your cards. Really, it's not so much to protect them unless you're opening for collection. It's just to make it easier to shuffle yeah. and to handle them. Yeah. Um, people have played with raw cards, and we do on the channel constantly. Um, Usually it's just out of convenience. If you have sleeves, they make the gaming experience like twice as good. Even like opinion. tapping your sleeved lands, it's so much harder to do without sleeves. And there are many, many sleeve products. You can get custom ones and there are big names and all of them are fine. But if you're just starting out, going on Amazon and getting the cheapest sleeves possible, like they're fine, they'll do the job. Hey Drew, will you show me how to sleeve a card? Yeah, sure. This is a binding mage and to sleeve a card, you're going to pinch the top, open a little bit of a crack and then just put it right in there. That's incredible. And now it spins Ooh. like the dickens. We, we love to see <laughs> it. Okay, I mean, other than that, we use dice, right? Yeah, so there are dice that are spin downs. These are 20 sided dice that they count up along the edge. So like one, two, three, and they aren't, you know, randomized like for it's Dungeons to and keep Dragons. track, right? You, that way you know where to go up or down. Yeah, one. if you have tokens or life totals, they'll keep track of them easily. And then there are these nice little D6s. These look like Monopoly dice, but they have the plus one, plus one symbol on them, and sometimes minus one, minus one for when you have creatures that you want to denote not only their quantity, but their stat increases. Yeah, the only two things I would say about that is you can get a ton of these on Amazon, they're super cheap. These spin downs, I'm sure you can get there as well, same with game stores, but Magic also gives them to you when you buy like pre-release packs. Yep, nice. Uh, or like fat packs or a bunch of other stuff. This is how we have all of the ones these, that we use at the warehouse. They just them everywhere, so keep an eye out for those. Once you have one or two, you don't need more. Yeah, okay, moving on to digital products. This is where people might mostly like get use out of this yep. video. Um, the app that we use to track life and turns and stuff like that is called LifeTap. Uh, the app looks kind of like this, and the icon has a pink D20 with a light blue background. Mm -hmm. um, LifeTap does everything that you could need it to. It decides who goes first, it keeps track of life, it keeps track of commander damage. It even keeps track of pesky little things like poison counters yep. and stuff like that. Or even the Monarch or whatever. I used to use the companion app. Um, I don't like the redesign as much. But it's very fun to just, can you hold it up and do the Skynet? Yeah. It's very fun to just decide who goes first and call it Skynet because Bing. that way, you know, the robots can do all the thinking for you and you're done. LifeTap is by far the best app that we've Fantastic. used. We've used a bunch of them, but it does the job the best and maybe someone will make a better one. But for now, LifeTap is the go. Let's talk about the internet. Yeah, so when you start getting into magic or if you're re-getting into magic, a huge problem that people run into is that there is a massive bevy of cards that they don't know what they do and they don't know what to put into their decks, whether they're playing commander or standard or what have you. We're gonna focus mostly on commander just because it's what we play the most. And uh, the first website that we would recommend going to is EDH Rec. Highly. Now, warning, EDH Rec will offer to build decks for you. <gasps> they're fine, Phew. but they won't really be vetted for cost and Ugh. Usually they are just a aggregate of what people do the most, which means that they're not going to be very unique and they'll probably just be like a little bit bland, which isn't bad. It's good for people who are starting, but they're not going to be like firecracker decks. Yeah, what I would do with EDH Rec is to think of an idea uh, or of like, if you don't know commanders at all, you can be like, I don't know, I want something that's aggressive. You can go to themes, yep. you can pick aggressive themes, it'll spit out a bunch of statistical, you know, 
choices for you, which are good. Uh, or the opposite, right? If you're like, I know I like this card, you can go look at this card and then it will tell you what cards go well with it. Yeah. Definitely use it as guidance. If Basically, there's an EDH rec deck syndrome where every color you can sit down with a deck that's just 85 of the same card. Exactly. Because, yeah, and it gets boring. Now, great place for ideas, especially if you're looking for something offbeat. It's good for suggestions yeah. and it's really good for if you have a niche mechanic, it'll show you cards that pair with niche yeah. things, which is really nice. Yeah, for sure. I think otherwise, um, that's just to play around and find out. You can even find a power ranking of like the commanders people like. Yep. It's very fun to go to the least liked commanders. Yeah, the really, lowest popularity. And just, see, yeah, just see what those do. But um, otherwise, that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Right. Now, if you wanted to go your own way and build your own deck, uh, there are two websites that we use. Actually, yep. Ryan and I use two different websites. Not really for any reason. It's, I think it's because I'm old and I started with one. And I just picked the first one that I found on Google. Yep. Uh, Moxfield <laughs> and Architect. Yeah. Both of them are great tools that let you build you know, whole decks and they'll even export them to online marketplaces so that you can order your decks wholesale. Yep. Um, they're, they're both great tools and people use them as sort of deck repositories that they can store all of their lists and send them out. We actually use uh, both of them to mm -hmm. store our deck lists for the channel, which will be coming to our commander videos very soon. Yep, um, you guys have seen links for those. Um, the coolest things about those is that you can ship them to any of the online marketplaces mm -hmm. generally. So we, uh, maybe we'll just jump ahead a little bit here, generally prefer TCG player. Um, Car Kingdom's great and there's other places even to find it uh, beyond that. It's just something I grew up using and that's what yeah. I did. You can one button click and go to any of those from there. It's much easier than inputting them by hand. Yeah, if you want to buy a commander deck, TCG player will do it. And also they can send you all of the cards in one package. Yeah. Usually it costs like an extra hundred dollars, but I mean, depending on how your That's play group is, point. like it, it, you know, some, Sometimes it's worth that sort of uh, extra little bump. On the subject of TCG player, there's a very important feature. There's optimizing your cart. If you do not do this, you are going to waste a lot of money yes. and get the wrong cards. Please click optimize and yeah. then make sure that all of the sub settings are to your liking. Yeah. You don't need them all on the same print. You don't need them all on the same quality usually. It'll give you lightly played, which is more than okay. It won't have any tears or anything. You're gonna be fine. Yeah, the only thing to say if you don't get the same print, sometimes you can get other languages. Um, if you care about that, then you may want to. But yep. at the end of the day, it's gonna let you choose those sliders. You'll see them there. And then there's three options. It's like direct with you know the best protection, middle of the ground protection or let's go wild and give me the cheapest. Figure out what you want. Usually I go middle. Yep. And then uh, two similar websites we have here, uh, Scryfall and yeah. Gatherer. Oh, yeah. So these websites both are used sort of as search tools mm -hmm. for the entire card library of Magic the Gathering's history. Scryfall is by far the better one. Yeah, it yeah. has clearer images, it has the easier load tags. are like half. Exactly, and it's a very modern site. It is an incredible place to go and find cards and search things and even just like looking through stuff, it shows you prices, it's incredible. The only reason that Gatherer is even being brought up is because it does one thing that Scryfall doesn't, which it has common rulings questions per card that have answers with them. Yeah, it, it's in a much easier place to find. So just go to your card, scroll all the way down, and it will tell you rulings from like tournaments or wherever they may have you. Uh, if you have a question about a card, 99 times out of 100, it's there. Yeah. Um, and that's very helpful. If you have a question that's not on Gatherer, typically it means that you've misunderstood a rule, yep. which comes up from time to time, um, but that's where I would start in the first place. Right? Gatherer really helps you not need a judge yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, if you have really convoluted questions, Gatherer does most of that. Yeah, pretty much. Um, other than that, I think that's all the websites we use. Yep, and then moving on, some people don't have the luxury of being able to play Magic the Gathering in person with people that are close to them. So online facilities have yeah. given people the ability to play over long distances. We the, gotta talk about the king. Yeah, I mean, MTG Arena is by far the one that is used the most and people are most able to do. And to be honest, it's a great tool. It's best for learning the game. Yeah. It does an incredible job of explaining the basics and fundamentals of the game. If you do not know how to play Magic and you want to, go play the tutorial. And then if you want, you can delete it from your computer because holy, that tutorial is incredible. Why don't we play Arena? Um, we mostly don't play Arena because we have the luxury of playing in person and going to our local game store, which everyone should try and go do. Supporting your local game store is important for keeping the community alive, but mostly but, it's that. And the third reason, which is that it doesn't have Commander. Yeah, that's true. It only has Brawl and it's 1v1, which is strange. Yeah. So, 
you know, it doesn't have Still commander. Fun. It's just a different flavor. Exactly. It's a it's a different type. Yeah, I would say the you said learning is important, and arena can definitely do that for new sets too. Yeah, One of exactly. the more popular choices. I and think. for draft. Exactly. Oh, great for draft. Draft the new set on there. Learn the cards. You'll be an ace when you go into your store. Now I do want to play commander online, but uh, MTG yeah. Arena doesn't do it. You have two options. If you want to play with paper cards, you can get Wizards free tool called Spell Table. Mm -hmm. Super easy. You can use your phone as a camera or just a webcam. You'll end up being matched either with random people or a private lobby and you and those other three can just play a game where your camera looks at your board and you pass the turn in a digital space. Mm. Super easy. But the other choice I think you're going to talk about is Cockatrice. Yeah, this is the tool that I've actually used the most. It looks kind of sketchy when you're on the site because yeah, I think bit. it's just off of a <laughs> it's GitHub. It's like a GitHub, yeah. Um, but it just imports all of the cards as images and you can create a lobby and just play through Magic yep. and play through Commander. It's totally fine. You don't need any paper cards. I've used this a lot to test decks yep. mostly. I'll just be in Discord online and I'll say, hey, does anyone want to play some Commander? And it'll be like a three-person game. I'll just get to jam a game of a new thing that I'm testing. I'll be like, wow, I really can't build a deck. And then I'll learn from it. Yep. I highly recommend doing a tutorial to get involved in Cockatrice because yes. it's not that it's that technically difficult, but it also involves like authenticating it to the server and like picking out your region and stuff. Go find a well-viewed tutorial and use those links that are there just to make sure you get to the right sketchy GitHub. Yep. So uh, that is going to wrap up all the tools that we recommend using for Magic the Gathering. If you guys have tools that we didn't mention, you should definitely write them because oh, yeah. maybe well, we'll start using them and uh, we recommend them to people. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, if you have anything else, let's, let's get the frick out of here. The last thing I have to say is you're great. Thanks. Bye-bye.